Hi again, everyone. Gary Digit Williams here on Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network. And the Boxing on the Beltway Podcast Network can be heard on Stitcher.com, Spreaker.com, of course, iHeartRadio.com, as well as on TuneIn. And we thank you for joining us for our Beltway Boxing News and Notes for this week. And uh, been been kind of busy, so we're trying to get them in as best we can. And this is a good opportunity for us to get our new podcast in. We have a lot to talk about this week as we talk about the January schedule. Uh, we also have some, um, we'll talk one of the big bouts that's coming up in January here in the Beltway, our first Beltway car of the year. And we also have um, some big news concerning our two Beltway boxes of the year for 2018. Hope you had a chance to uh, look at the blog, boxonbeltway.blogspot.com, and check out Juan Marshall and our awards for the uh, for this year we think we did a fine job with that in all honesty kind of patting ourselves on the back a little bit but we thought we did a good job and uh the the champions the, the ones that got beltway boxing boxers of the year uh are involved in some situation that could be very interesting down the road hopefully if all go the one we're going to get right away because he got more accolades again as he's had all throughout 2018 and into 2019 but uh, the other one could have a very big bout coming up for her uh in 2019 so we'll see what happens Bill A Boxing News and Notes on the Box on Bell A Podcast Network is brought to you and sponsored by Real Time Pain Relief. From boxers to ballerinas for shoulder pain and muscle strain, everything in between. Boxing along the Beltway recommends Real Time Pain Relief, the natural plant based, safe, fast, and effective ointment. You go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief, you get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time and was sponsored by deborah spears.com who has a great book on weight loss without dieting eating real food along the way and she's also selling that great jewelry on her website and so go ahead and go on to deborah d-e-b-r-a spears.com well let's the first talk start talking about the january schedule for the rest of this month um we get into some interesting bouts early on in uh 2019 and um we start off with Thursday, January 17th. This will be at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's where Baltimore, Maryland Cruiserweight Travis Severe Reeves, a former prospect of the year and also a former knockout of the year uh, candidate, uh, w- a winner, I should say. He'll be in a bout against Linnell Bellows of Las Vegas. He's originally from Kansas City, Missouri. Now, no word yet how long this bout is scheduled for. But uh, this should be an interesting bout. Both guys can punch real well. It should be interesting. Reeves is 16, 3 and 2, 7 KOs, coming off that 8 round unanimous decision win over Devin Butcher. He kind of dominated Butcher on that card. Devin Butcher on September 22nd. That was at uh, Bowie State University, AC Jordan Arena in Bowie, Maryland. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Bellows is 18, 3 and 2 with 11 KOs. He also fought his last bout on September 22nd, and he lost a 10 round unanimous decision to a very good fighter in Christopher Brooker. And that was in Sam's Town in Las Vegas as well. So. That should be interesting. If Reeves can get past Bellows, uh, he can put his career really, it's still on track, but it really can make him elevate into one of the better cruiserweights in the country and in the world. And Devin, uh, I should say, uh, Linnell Bellows is, was originally a super middleweight who's kind of moving up in this situation. So I don't know if they're going to meet each other light heavy or what's going to happen here, but, um, should be an interesting card. No question about that. So that'll be Thursday, January 17th. From the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, Nevada. Then on Friday, January the 18th, this will be at the theater at Madison Square Garden in New York City. DC welterweight Cornell Hitman Hines. Of course, he's trained by the Hall of Famer and legend Mark Two Sharp Johnson. He'll be in his first six round contest after only three bouts. It'll be his fourth bout. And he'll be in a six rounder against an opponent to be determined. Hines is 3 0, two KOs. He went the distance for his first time in his last outing. He won a four-round NAM decision over Samuel Forjo on September 30th at the Sphinx Club in Washington, D.C. Now, I, if I remember correctly, Mark wasn't Mark Johnson wasn't overly excited about that fight against Forjo. I think I think uh, Johnson wanted Hines to do a little bit more there. So, uh, so it'll be interesting to see what he does here in his first six-round bout. No word yet on his opponent. That'll be on Friday, January the 18th at the theater at Madison Square Garden. 
On Friday, January 25th at Michael State Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland, Baltimore Boxing Promotion will have their first amateur show of the year. It'll be the Super Brawl of Boxing. Jake Smith back in action once again. And uh, no word officially on the entire car. I hope to get that to you later on. But the one person we do know is on the car, the return of Brian Bam Bam Hanslager. He's the heavyweight out of Maryland. He's scheduled to return on that car. That's Friday, January 25th from Michael State Avenue in Glen Burnie, Maryland. And then on Saturday, January 26th, we have the first pro show in the Beltway for 2019. There'll be a Sunday Sports Promotions car. We talked about this a little bit in our last podcast. However... We found out that the location has changed again. Uh, we originally were told it's going to be at the Patapsco Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, which again would have helped me because I have a, a uh, basketball game that afternoon. But I've heard now it'll be moved back to the Waldorf Culture Center. That's on 109 Post Office Road in Waldorf, Maryland. That's the Waldorf Culture Center. And it'll be interesting to see what happens in this card. Not a whole lot of uh, bouts have been signed for this card, but this car will feature two of our former Beltway Rookies of the Year, Matt Gallison Jr. He won it in I believe, 2015, and Jamal Dyer won it in 2017 alongside Gary Antoine Russell. And they're both on this card in separate bouts. Also, Jenk uh, Planner, who, for what I hear, is supposed to take on Ashton Sykes. No word yet. Is that official? But but Yank Planner is actually how he pronounced his name. He is scheduled to be on this card, the Sexy Albanian. Also, Jonathan Burge, George Harris, Nigel Fennell, uh, Philip Stankovic, we said. Lamont White, who is scheduled to take on Matt Murphy, which should be a very interesting bout. Um, these are two of the toughest guys you will meet. Uh, they very rarely go down. In fact, Lamont White has never been knocked out in a uh, bout. And he goes against another guy who's been very tough against Beltway boxers, although he's not been overly successful. But he still gives a lot of our guys great work. That should be an interesting battle if that comes to fruition. And also we had the pro debut of our newest female uh, boxer. And hopefully she'll be a sensation just like the rest of them have been. And that's Destiny Day Owens out of Baltimore. She'll be uh, debuting on this card. So that's Saturday, January 26th. We'll talk more about this one. This card, a Signation Sports Promotions card. And that'll be from the Waldorf Cultural Center in Waldorf, Maryland. So we'll give you more about that as the days and weeks go on. So that's the schedule for January. Now, the rest of this podcast concerns our two Beltway Boxers of the Year. Franchon Cruz Desern, who won it for the very first time, and also Swift Jared Hurd, who is the first Beltway Boxer in the Boxing on the Beltway era to win this award three years. And he's won it three years in a row. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about Franchon Cruz Desern first because She's going to be involved, it looks like, if all goes to fruition. And one particular promoter, who I love dearly, he's a great guy, gets his way. This will happen soon. Lou DiBella, who is an outstanding promoter, who has been around for the longest time and has has done some great work in professional boxing over the years, he is working on an all-female boxing card. Now, I I say that like it is something new, but in D.C., in in the Beltway, We've had this before. Our good buddy Wanda Countess has done this in the past, both on the pro side and on the amateur side. And she's had all female bouts, including some great people. I know one she had at the, uh, what is now the DC star, um, featured the likes of Israel Gergra. Of course, who's a DC boxing hall of famer. Uh, Melissa Del Val. In fact, she faced Melissa Del Val on that particular card. And she's had some great people on an all female show. And on the amateur side, she's had the likes of, uh, Tori Nelson on the amateurs, and I believe Tyshia Douglas did one as well. So they won in the cards as well. So this is not a new thing, but Lou DeBella wants to bring this to another another level. And the car to be held sometime in the spring of 2019, held somewhere in the New York tri-state area, and maybe include two and maybe up to four world title bouts. Now, that's a big thing in and of itself. One of the bouts that is verbally agreed to, both boxers have verbally agreed to this bout, is a unification super middleweight championship between the heavy hitting diva, diva Franchon Cruz Desern, who's WBC uh, super middleweight champion, and the relatively new WBA super middleweight title holder, Alicia the Empress Napoleon. That name should be familiar to you. She's out of Lindenhurst, New York. 
Of course, as we know by now, Cruz Dezern, who's 4-1 with one, one KO, she won that super middleweight championship in a 10-round majority decision over Maricela La Diva Conejo. Uh, and that was on September 13th at the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, Napoleon, and this is why we, she should be very familiar to all of us here in the Beltway, is 10 and 1, 5 KOs. That in itself is very interesting. She won three straight bouts after ho- suffering her only loss. That loss came to Tori Nelson. And that was on a 10 round unanimous decision back in December 2016 at the ABC Sports Complex in Springfield, Virginia. So, and again, that was a great bout. I believe that bout is, yes, it is that bout. It is on uh, Fox on Beltway Podcast Network. You can hear that back in December. And uh, it, it was a pretty good bout. And I tell you, Napoleon was built. I mean, she was, she looked extremely strong. And the two of them, both of them are very big young ladies. And they're very strong young ladies. That would be a great bout. No question about that. Now, Napoleon went on to win the WBA title. Back on March 3rd in Brooklyn, New York, beating Femke Hermans. And she defended that title by beating Hannah Rankin by an unanimous decision on August 4th on Uniondale, in Uniondale, Long Island, New York. Now, the other unification title bout will be in the featherweight division. WBO champion Heather Hardy taking on WBA and WBC champion Jelena Marjanovic. So this is a great situation for women's boxing and, you know, the Bella told BoxingScene.com, quote, I've said for a long time that I was going to do an all-women's card. And I feel more stronger than ever, ever that it's way beyond its time, end quote. And she, you know, he followed up the bouts against between uh, Clarissa Shields and Hannah Gabriels. Of course, you had uh, Christina Hammer against uh, Tori Nelson. Also, uh, Clarissa Shields took on Franchon Cruz Desern. I mean, we've had a number of great women's boxers. Um, boxing in the last uh, few months, and the Bella done has done an outstanding job with female boxers. Not only does she have Napoleon on the contract, not only does she have Heather Hardy on the contract, but she also has our very own Tierra Brown, who's one of our prospects of the year for 2018, and that could be interesting as well. Since Brown has come under the Bella banner, uh, who she's seven and oh five KO, she's registered two stoppages under the Debella banner and uh, Brown and Debella mentions Brown along with names like Raquel Miller, who are also under contract with Debella, Mariana Juarez, Ava Knight, Jessica McCaskill, Melissa St. Ville, who we've seen here a couple of times in this area. Um, she said, he said he's not limiting this card to people that he promotes because he wants to make an all female fight card that quote blows people's mind. So that should be interesting. And that could pave a way for a big influx of women boxing, female boxers going forward. Uh, So we hopefully that will take place sometime in the spring of 2019. And right now it looks like definitely Franchon Cruz de Zern is involved uh, in a unification bout in the super middleweight division. Hopefully Tierra Brown will get involved as well. And, uh, and hopefully Tyra Shea Douglas get back in the, in the game and she'll be involved. So it'll be fantastic to see what's going on. Jennifer Salinas as well. Uh, we'll see what she's doing in 2019 as well. So that's Franchon Cruz de Zern, one of our Beltway Boxers, uh, Beltway Boxers of the Year. And the other story is concerned the guy that has dominated that award for the last three years. And again, I explained why. I gave Jared Hurd this, uh, myself and Juan, I should say, gave Jared Hurd this award. And really because he's been able to elevate his game. Now, one of the things that I've, Juan and I have discussed over the years, and we've thought about it, and then we've said, no, we, we're not going to do it. And that's do a beltway boxing pound for pound. We, we, we're kind of mulling that over. I don't want to do it because I know there are a lot of fragile egos in this, in this beltway boxing scene. And I don't want to damage any of them, to be perfectly honest with you. And I don't want the arguments that come to, you know, I should be this and I should be that. But I should be not, I should be on top and so forth. But what Juan and I did with the Beltway Boxer of the Year Award this year, um, not just the the combination of Desern, Cruz Desern and Hurd winning the Beltway Boxer of the Year, but I think this year had the longest list of honorable mentions I think we've ever had in the Boxing on the Beltway era. 
But everyone deserved to be there, but it was just a couple of steps behind what both Cruz Desern and um, and uh, Heard have done. They all had outstanding years. When you look at uh, what Demon Nicholson has done, I mean, after losing that bout to Jesse Hart, he came back strong and won two quality bouts. <clears throat> you know, Javante Davis and Gary Russell Jr., they defended their title, even though they only fought once in the year. Javante Davis had an outstanding knockout, win over Jesus Cuellar. And, of course, uh, Gary Russell Jr. had a bout of the year candidate when he defeated uh, Jojo Diaz Jr. When you look at what Alexander Marine has done, I mean, you look at his elevation now into the top, well, top 12 in one uh, weight class and top three in another. I mean, and, I'm sorry, in one uh, top top 12 in one federation, one top three in another organization. So he's right on the verge of winning a world title. Uh, Michael Fox had an outstanding year this year. I mean, we had a long list this year because everyone deserved to be mentioned. Lamont Rose Jr., you know, a great win. He he defended this title and won a title this year, won a regional title. But both what Cruz Desern after only five wins, five bouts getting a world title. And, of course, Jared Hurd, again, elevating his game where you thought that maybe he couldn't go any further, you know. But he elevated that game. And <clears throat> he's gotten the accolades for it. Both ESPN and the Sporting News named his April 7th bout against Eris Lani Lar, where he won the WBA and IBO titles and defended the IBF championship as its bout of the year. And we knew that was going to happen. Not that he may win it, but we knew he was definitely, that bout was in the running because it was an outstanding bout for a lot of reasons. I mean, first of all, Lar fought so much better than we expected him to do. So that was the big thing. Eris Lani Lara really fought extremely well that day. And it was a close contest that really, according to the the scores, her was probably behind going into the 12th round. And then he got that beautiful knockdown with 37 seconds to go in the 12th and final round. And that gave her to win 114-113 on two of the scorecards. Lara took one of the scorecards by that same score, 114-113. It was an incredible bout. It, it, it was it was just, I mean, it's one of those bouts you can look at over and over and just enjoy it. No question about that. And then the 10th round of the contest was also named among the best rounds by ESPN of 2018. So, I mean, that's how great that bout was. And he definitely elevated his game uh, for Jared Hurd. And that made him one of the elite boxers in the sport today. And of course, he got all the accolades for it, you know, as far as him being lauded by the Prince George's County Council. He got his fist cast in um, at the International Boxing Hall of Fame. He's one of the only two current boxers to do that this year, this past year. Uh, when you look at, he was talking to, to school kids. Uh, he talked to uh, Bowie State's football team as well as students there. He was lauded by the Washington Pro Football Team. He he uh, did a school back to school drive in the community. I mean, he's done outstanding work since winning that bout in April. Okay, and then the Premier Boxing Champions, which uh, Al Heyman, which is uh, one of his managers, his manager basically, um, the promoter, should not manage his promoter, excuse me, his promoter Al Heyman and Premier Boxing Champions. Named Jared Hurd the Fighter of the Year. Not only for his bout against Eris Lani Law on April 7th, but also his fourth round knockout win over Jason uh, Wellborn on December 1st in Los Angeles, California, where he successfully defended all three of those titles. But again, Jared Hurd is among the elite in this business. He's right there. I mean, with, with, uh, with Charlo beating Tony Harris, no, I'm sorry. With Tony Harris beating Charlo, excuse me. Tony Harris beating Charlo. Jared Hurd might get some votes now for pound for pound uh, boxer. I mean, he won't get number one, I doubt, but he might get in the top 10 on rings pound for pound list. And that'll be the first time Bowie Boxer's done that since Mark Two Sharp Johnson. 
he has been an incredibly wonderful boxer in 2018. And the sky's limit with him. You know, you're talking about still a bout with Charlo, maybe in, in uh, 2019. Maybe a rematch with Tony Harrison. If I'm him, I don't take that. I don't take that. It's not, it doesn't, that doesn't solve anything, as far as I'm concerned. Now there comes word that Jaime Mungia uh, is looking at Jared Hurd. Jaime Mungia is not ready for Jared Hurd, in my opinion. He is not ready for him. So that bout, although it makes sense from a unification standpoint, especially if he wins his bout coming up, uh, he's going after the WBO title. It doesn't make a whole lot of I mean, right now it doesn't make a whole lot of sense except for the fact that being a unification bout. But I think in all honesty, it'd be easy work for Jared Hurd in that situation. J Rock Williams. Julian Williams is, is in the uh, mix as well as a as a uh contender. So he can pick and choose whoever he wants to, but he is the, the best boxer in the hundred and forty on the fifty four pound class, bar none, point blank, period. And it'll be interesting to see what he does in 2019. It should be great. It should be interesting to see what all of our boxers do in 2019. This may be an outstanding year. Juan Marsh and I will hopefully talk about this in the next couple of months. Uh, um, my status at the Waldorf fight is kind of up in the air right now because I'll be coming from Baltimore, and that's going to be a trip for me. I may not make that. I don't know. We'll see. I have, I have to play that one by ear. But be it as it may. Uh, 2018 was an outstanding year. Once again, you can watch, you can look at all the selections uh, Juan Marsh and I made on the Box on Beltway blog, uh, Box on Beltway that blogspot.com, of course. So, uh, again, Jared Hurd, Franchon Cruz Zern, all of our Beltway boxes had outstanding years. It was the year of the status quo because we're able to maintain the excellence that we've had uh, in the previous year. So, we'll see what happens as we go into 2019. And that will do it for Beltway Boxing News and Notes on the Box on Beltway Podcast Network. Beltway Boxing News and Notes sponsored by Real Time Pain Relief. Go to freepainoffer.com, buy $10 worth of Real Time Pain Relief. You get a free $10 tube of Real Time Pain Relief. Rub it on, the pain is gone in real time. And don't forget to go to DebraSpears.com. She sponsors us as well. Great weight loss tips and great jewelry on Debra, D E B R A Spears. Dot com. I'm Gary Digital Williams. Thank you so much for joining us here on Box on Beltway Podcast Network. And always remember to keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. Thanks for listening. Take care.